Inside Dove Nation, this brand new pod- podcast, 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 podcast. Gosh, you can't even speak. Podcast. We're not editing anything out. It's a podcast, dude. Anyway, welcome to the podcast. Today I'm here with Beast Wolf. We're doing this together. Yo, what's up? What's up? What's up? Okay. Well, let's get straight into this. We've got a few topics to talk about today. So let's start off with, are you excited for Cavs versus Warriors 3? If you are, tell me why. If you're not, still tell me why. Okay, so I'm actually pretty excited for Warriors against Cavs, the third edition, because, I mean, it's basically like the rubber series. Um, now, there are no injuries in these finals. So, because last year, I remember that Curry had a, like a tweaked ankle and Iguodala had some injuries. Bogut, got, and in Bogut died. Bogut died. Yeah, Bogut died. <laughs> died. Then, Kevin Love and Kyrie Irving were injured yeah. in 2015. So, if, no, if nothing goes wrong in this series, I think it will be a fun one to actually see. Because... Yeah. Because in 2015, people were like, oh, if, if, if um, Kevin Love and Kyrie were, um, oh, I can't, I'm losing words here, but if Kevin Love and Kyrie were uh, healthy, then, yeah. then they would have, um, then the cast would have won the series. But yeah. You know what, I'm I'm excited and not excited. Like, I'm excited because the last two series have been very exciting. But the thing is that Kevin Durant is now on the Warriors, so it's not like a full rubber match, but I think it'll still be a fun thing to watch. LeBron on a mission is always very fun to watch, and KD trying to get his first ring will be fun to watch, so, yeah. Yep, yep. So let's move on to the second topic of today's podcast. What's your opinion on Lonzo Ball? Do you like him? Just anything you have to think about. Lonzo. Okay, here's the thing. I like Lonzo Ball. I don't like his dad. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There's, there's like a point where you can be proud of your son, but comparing yourself to Michael Jordan, the goat, that's no. Comparing yourself to Steph Curry, the greatest shooter of all time. No, no, no. That's he hasn't even played a game in the NBA. Okay, I feel like Lonzo Ball. I don't hate him, but I. But the thing about this is, I feel like he's so intent on going to the Lakers. Imagine what will happen if they pass up on him. Imagine if they go with Josh Jackson or Jason Tatum or someone else of that sort of matter. And if they don't go with Lonzo Ball. Now, Lonzo Ball hasn't worked out with... He says he's not working out with any other team other than the Lakers. So, I mean, he kind of looks like an egotistical freak right now. Yep, true, true, true. Also, after his dad... Is like saying all these things about him. He has to live up to that potential. So I think that puts a lot of pressure. pressure yeah, yeah. He's he's a great shooter. Like I saw his highlights. He's he has a great vertical, but I don't think he's better than Steph Curry right now. No, no, he may be in the future. We don't know. Yeah, true, true, true. All right, third topic of today's podcast. What should the Celtics do about their point guard situation? Should they draft Fultz? Should they trade Isaiah, draft Fultz? Should they trade their pick? Should they trade draft Fultz and trade him after a while? Uh, should they play both of them? Maybe, maybe play Fultz at shooting guard? What do you think? So, I think pretty locked in on every... Uh, uh, every... Ah, I'm losing words again! Okay. I think they're locked in on every position because they have Avery Bradley, a great uh, shooter, plus a defensive stopper, and Isaiah Thomas, of course. Um, and then small forward, Jalen Brown. Now, he's also a rookie, but I you think... You mean Jay Crowd is starting for them right now? When Beast Wolf doesn't know his news. Anyways, um, <laughs> anyways... And I'm just I'm just talking about Jalen Brown right now. I'm not, I'm not talking about the, the he's starters. A future, he's a future piece. Yeah, I know. But I think they should keep Marquette's faults and put him at backup point guard. Markel. But play him a lot of minutes. That's what I think they should do. Markel and Fultz. If he if he's thriving there, then they should keep him there and then trade him away later to get trade a better Trade him point. away? Yeah. Okay, you've got to think about it in this perspective. Isaiah Thomas is old. 
I, he's, I he he's getting up there in years. I say Markel Fultz has one of the best potentials out of everyone in this draft class. I say you snatch up the talent now, see where it takes you. That's basically what I'm doing, but instead just... Put him at back at point guard and then. I say you do not him. trade Markel Fultz. I say you let Isaiah keep playing for you. Maybe if he gets too old and he's not really producing as much as he was before. And. Okay, you've also... but, tra but trade him away if he's not doing well. No, of course, yeah. But you're yeah, saying. Uh, yeah. Basically, but Will if you... he's doing well, then. Okay, yeah, okay, I see, I see your point. I see your point. Alright, well, uh, next topic. When will the Cavs' reign of dominance in the East end? Okay. Now, um, if the Celtics keep on doing what they're doing, getting better and better, and not choking the playoffs like they did this year. They didn't I choke. They didn't choke, but, like, do bad. What are they supposed to do? They lost Isaiah Thomas. I know, but still. So, in game one, in game one, they didn't play well either with Isaiah Thomas. Okay, but the Celtics are nowhere near the Cavs' level at this point. You've got you've got good pieces, but you've only got one superstar on that team. They would have to add someone else. Yeah, Mark hits Fultz. Markel, it's Markel. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> okay, so Markel Fultz. Hey, I don't pay attention to college ball. That's too bad. Lol. Well, you, well, you didn't actually answer the question. The question was, who's gonna? It, when is the Cavs' reign of dominance in the East gonna end? Okay, okay, I'm getting to that. I'm getting to that. So, you know, when LeBron James is gonna retire? Wow. That is when the Cavs. So you don't think uh, he? So you don't think he's gonna decline at 35, 36? No. Oh, okay. No, I don't think he. I don't think you will. That's interesting. I mean, he maybe... won't. He's the. He's the. I don't know. He's I. Pretty... I don't want to call him the goat because comments be like MJ lovers be like he's not the goat, but nah. he's really close to goat status. He's right close. Now. I think he's yeah. second of all time. I think he's past Kobe. Mm -hmm. For sure. All right, well, final topic of today. Who has the best chance of being a star out of 2017 draft class, in your opinion? I think either Lonzo Ball or Marco Fultz. Just because uh, Lonzo Ball is just a great shooter, and he can spread the floor and make great shots. And um, he, he can be a great leader for his team. Because it, he's going to probably go to the Lakers, for sure, That's right? right? Yeah. Yeah, he's going to probably go to the Lakers. Almost a foregone well, conclusion. Well, I think he can be a great shooter along along with... Um, Playmaker? Brandon Ingram and and D'Angelo Russell and other great players. I think in a few years, uh, the Lakers can make it to the playoffs if Lonzo Ball is not... But the you've got to also think about the fact that D'Angelo Russell may also be traded so that they can actually bring in Lonzo Ball. Or, a lot of people say it's better if they play D'Angelo Russell at shooting guard. And Ingram right now, to be honest with you, he looks like a bust. I'm I'm just saying. Really? <laughs> okay. He, he kind of does. I'm... I don't think so. I really don't. Maybe he just needs a... Better year next year, maybe more minutes. I don't know. But in my opinion, the person who's going to have the best chance of being a star is Markel Fultz. I mean, Markel Fultz, he's got... I don't know if you saw this, but he's been working out a lot. He just got so much Yeah, muscle. I know. And, dude, it, it, he, he, has the, he has the build to be an NBA player already. He can do everything. He's basically like, sort of. He's sort of like a Russell Westbrook type player, and yeah. So I yeah, uh, he, he's already gone half the work. He's already gone like half like the mindset he has to have work. That's his work ethic is great. Yeah, it and is. That's what you need to become a great player. And Mark Helfoltz yeah. has the best chance of becoming a great player. Well, that's gonna end this. 
Inside Dub Nation podcast number one. I hope you enjoyed it. Beast Wolf, I hope. We had fun, right? Yep. Even yeah. though I suck at NBA, NBA um, <laughs> I guess it was fun. All right. I, I don't pay attention to college ball. I really don't. Ah, that's fine. But anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll see you later.